This is a deficient RTX 5080 card with eight missing ROPs, but it's a Founders Edition, which means that Nvidia controlled the entire end-to-end -end process just like they want, and they still somehow fucked it up. And that's a big deal. We'll show you why today, but the impact can be as high as 10 to 12% in some of the gaming scenarios that we tested. Gets worse at higher resolutions. That's okay, though. You'd never play a high resolution with a thousand plus dollar video card, right? Right? The DL, DL, DLSS? So, uh, the common impact is 3 to 8%. There's a couple results that are 11, 12%. Uh, better on the proper functioning 5080 versus this one, meaning that one's improved by that much. And we traded a functional Zotac 5080 to our viewer, Mason, for this defective 5080. So thanks for the trade, Mason. Thanks, Steve. We've confirmed and validated that this GPU is missing eight of its ROPs. And as far as we're aware, Mason was the first one to have discovered this. It's down at 104 ROPs from the expected 112. That means the proper card has nearly 8% more ROPs than the defect. This is a huge problem because this is the type of issue that you cannot identify it by looking at the card. Now, uh, contrary to what you might think, this blue painter's tape with the missing ROPs label on it, they don't just ship them with that. So because you can't see the defect and because the defect won't be obvious in performance unless you probably have another card that's similarly powered to compare against, this is something that will very easily fly under the radar, especially for mainstream users. People who don't know we exist don't pay attention to this stuff after they build the system. They build their system, they go about their way. That is most people. There will absolutely be defective units out there and people won't know about them. And at some point they'll end up on the secondhand market and you'll get screwed. And it might be past sort of a reasonable RMA window. Maybe they just tell you to go yourself if you have a defective unit in four years that you bought secondhand or something. But we don't think NVIDIA has done enough to draw attention to this issue. We're going to talk about that a lot today because this is this really is a problem and they need to do more active outreach to let people know about it because you're when you talk about three to 12 percent, that's the entire difference between some of the SKUs in the stack right now. And even for the ones with larger differences, against the subsequent SKUs, you look at the 5090, NVIDIA claims a 4% difference, which we'll talk about that too, but that is basically like the difference in a partner model. <laughs> That's a big problem. When you're talking about cards this expensive with this small of a gap between them, it really matters. And the fact that NVIDIA happened to know 0.5% within a day of the story breaking, and they excluded the 5080, to us, this is very suspicious. NVIDIA may claim 0.5%, but from first-hand experience in our inbox alone, we have a hard time believing the count is that low. Especially, again, since it didn't name the 5080 in the original statement. Either NVIDIA didn't know about the 5080 being affected, in which case it's wrong about the defect rate, or it did know, and it's being disingenuous at best by leaving it out. We're not sure which is worse here, but we've received dozens of emails from those of you in the audience, messages on social media accounts, saying that you have defective units because we put a bounty out for these, offering to pay extra, and Wow, there are a lot of people with defective cards who are emailing us. Uh, so, especially when you consider the relatively low supply. Now, we don't think this is like 10 or 20% or whatever. We don't have any reason to believe it's that crazy because we'd certainly know if that were the case, but it just seems like more than 0.5. How much more? Don't know. Anyway, that's the backstory. Let's get into the testing. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Tower 600 case. The Tower 600 is a vertical case design with Thermaltake's unique showcase presentation, which stands out further with its separate chassis stand kit that rotates the case for an angled showpiece. The Tower 600 is heavily ventilated around the sides, has a ton of radiator support, including up to 420mm solutions, and offers two GPU mounting options for display and cooling optimization. It also comes in colors not commonly seen in cases. Learn more about the Tower 600 at the link in the description below. A ROP is a raster operations pipeline or a render output unit if you prefer it. It's a core part of a GPU. We already explained this in depth in another video about this topic and we'll link that below if you want all of it, but here's the basics. The NVIDIA Blackwell architecture for gaming GPUs looks like this block diagram at most. This is the full configuration without anything disabled. Each GPC has eight TPCs, with two groups of eight ROPs assigned separately to groupings of four TPCs. In some 5090, 5070 Ti, and now 5080s, 
one of these banks of it rops appears to be disabled, or is at least not functioning. As we said before, the weird thing is that this shouldn't have been possible on the 5080 using traditional knowledge of how this type of manufacturing change can happen. The 5080 should be a full GB203 die, and so there are no disabled SMs on a GB203 RTX 5080 unlike a 5090 or a 5070 Ti, where some of the stuff is turned off, and there could be collateral damage under traditional understanding. So maybe some poor TSMC or NVIDIA employee accidentally knocked over a coffee mug and it spilled on the delete ROPS.exe button or something. Whatever the case is, it had an impact. Now, over the years, in terms of where do ROPS sort of show up in testing data, the places we've seen an advantage in ROPS, not from a deficiency, but just how they were architected as close to ISO frequency and everything else as possible, typically we see that advantage from uh, a, a benefit or a focus on ROPS appear in higher resolutions, so especially 4K. You see it in a lot of types of anti-aliasing, especially the older, really heavy anti-aliasing or 16-tap MSAA or something like that. You'd see it in those situations. Also, scenes that are heavily blended, so ROPS are pretty late in the pipeline, and as a result, you'll see the impact from the higher count ROPS on the defect versus the functional proper unit show up in those blending situations at high resolutions. NVIDIA acknowledged this issue shortly after it emerged, but only for the 5070 Ti and the 5090. It almost immediately somehow knew exactly how many units were affected, which further reinforces our belief that NVIDIA would have known about this, with the company pinning it to 0.5% of units. The company did not name the 5080, it also didn't really apologize, and we felt it downplayed the performance impact to the lowest number possible, which would have been that 4% on the 5090 that they cited. It didn't mention that the 5070 Ti and the 5080 impact would be greater. After Mason's card showed up on Reddit, NVIDIA issued a second statement that we're gonna call their oopsies statement, where they confirmed the 5080 was also affected. Ergo, oopsies. Let's get into some basic numbers for performance here. So there's two things we're kind of looking at. The first is gonna be the performance impact against a normal 5080. And that's just an A-B comparison, it's very simple. The second one is the change in relative position in just a couple of the games where it's more exaggerated to look at the relative rank versus the 5070 Ti and the 7900XTX. We're gonna keep the charts really focused and simple today because we don't need much to show the evidence of performance impact. This chart shows the head-to-head -head in average FPS for the 25080 cards, just for averages only. Some games are almost exactly identical. Baldur's Gate 3 predictably is CPU bound in some situations, but it's nice to know that a CPU bound scenario didn't force a gap. Black Myth Wukong has remarkably consistent results, and Final Fantasy XIV was within one FPS for this testing, but there are some differences. Total War Warhammer 3 is the most concerning of these. This one has always rooted out the most erratic behavior in testing, and that's why we keep it around even though we don't always show it. Across all three resolutions, we saw major swings at 4K, we observed an 11% improvement with the actual 5080 rather than the deficient one. That's a difference as big as the gap between some of NVIDIA's models entirely. Dying Light 2 also consistently showed a gap. The full 5080 ran 8.7% higher frame rate for average FPS than the deficient one. F124 showed a 3.3% improvement with all ROPS, and Resident Evil 4 was at 1.6% which is outside of our run-to-run -run variance and outside of our error, so that's still a real result, and Starfield was a 2.3% swing. At 1440p, we saw an 8.8% improvement with all ROPS enabled in Dying Light 2, which matches our 4K results. Final Fantasy is about 2% different, Dragon's Dogma 2 saw a 2.5% increase to the proper 5080, and F124 is at 0.8%. Let's really briefly look at how this impacts the relative ranking versus other cards. We'll look at only the games with the largest impact for a worst case set of scenarios here, so we're not going to go through every single game, if you want that data, just check out the 5080 review, uh, and then it's you know, plus or minus a couple percent. Here's the Total Warhammer 3 result at 4K. The 5080 ROPS variant, or the reduction of performance, ran at 82 FPS average, a significant reduction from the correct result of 91 FPS average. Before, the 5080 was tied with the 7900XDX and with an error. Now, the 7900XDX outperforms the 5080 by 12%. This is a huge swing. It makes the 7900XDX significantly better value in this test. Sure, the partners might help you replace a defective model. However, that requires noticing it. The gap over the not ROPS deficient 5070 Ti is also reduced to nothing here. This particular title and the way we test it is highly reactive to this defect. In Dragon's Dogma 2, the 5080 Special Edition landed between the stock model and the 7900XTX, cutting the gap in half. This significantly harms the value of the RTX 5080. The lead is reduced from 10% to 5%, so it is literally halved. 
The lead over the 5070 Ti is also cut, now 9.4% from 15%. 1080p shows the 5080 Regression of Performance Edition at 157.1 FPS average from 165, which reduces it to equal with the 4080. Before, they were functionally equal. Now they are literally equal. The 5080's lead over the 5070 Ti was 9%, now it's 3.8%. It was cut into a third of the benefit, basically. The 7900XDX now is nearly within run-to-run -run variance of the 5080 defect. We'll just look at one more. In Dying Light 2 at 4K, the RTX 5080 normal card ran at 81 FPS average with the 5080 ROPS defect card at 74.5 FPS average. The 5080 was 11.7% ahead of the 7900XDX, but is now only 2.8% ahead. If you bought the 5080 instead of the 7900XDX and you really relied on that result difference, then this is a big problem because now the ranking shuffles. And if you don't notice and you just keep using the defective device, you're gonna get screwed. You're stuck with something worse than you thought. Now checking this is really easy. So when you buy a 50 series card, the first thing you should do is check for all the ROPs just to make sure you're not one of the ones affected. You have to do a clean install of the drivers. If you check GPUZ without the drivers installed, it will reference a lookup table and it's just gonna tell you the correct amount even if they're not present. So you need to install the drivers first, then install the latest version of GPUZ, which is made from and hosted by Tech Power Up. And then you can check the first tab and look for ROPs. Then what you can do is look at the screen we have here, and that'll tell you how many there should be present versus how many are expected in a defect. Now, if it's different from this number, that's a new problem entirely, but it should be the expected column. If you see that after installing the drivers, you're good to go. So if it isn't correct, you absolutely should seek a replacement in the very least. We think you should just seek a refund because uh, simply put, if you're within that sort of typical 30-day retailer window, just send it in, get your money back. It's way easier. You don't have to deal with potential for RMA hell. I mean, they should just replace it and they probably will. The problem is if there's limited supply and uh, they don't happen to have one on hand when you need it, you might sit there kind of spinning your wheels waiting for a replacement for a little bit. So we're not sure about that. Uh, personally, I would just get a refund. If I really wanted it, I'd buy it again. Now, easier said than done right now, but it might work out for you anyway. You might be, if you got scalped the first time, you got screwed by higher prices, especially pre-AMD announcement, they might be a little cheaper now. So uh, anyway, that's just personally what I would do. If you really value having the card, then obviously you'll just have to think through that, maybe go through the RMA processes. But either way, uh, there is absolutely a performance impact. NVIDIA's original statement is completely misleading. Uh, it is disingenuous at best. They left out the 5080, and yet they claimed the percent impact, and it all happened so fast that once again, we have to question how they knew that percent impact that quickly, but also left out the 5080, because it's one of those things that's wrong, right? Like either the percentage number is wrong, unless they're saying 0.5% of all, all of these SKUs, in which case the total assumed unit count is wrong. And in that situation, they didn't know about the 5080, or they actually did know, and they decided not to mention it because no one else had yet. And that is a problem. Both of those are problems. <laughs> if they didn't know, it's a big problem because that's something that NVIDIA should know. If they, if they did know, it's a big problem. That's because they were disingenuous with the answer, which they were anyway, because the number reference, a couple of things. One is they said one ROP instead of eight ROPs. We're at two TPUs point. It's eight ROPs when it's marketing time. It's one ROP when it's problem time, or one ROP unit as they call it. And then uh, secondarily, the number they gave was 4%, which appeared to be sort of through like, if we use mathematics and language, like transitively applied to the 5090 or something in that statement, because the 5070 Ti and the 5080, they're gonna be more than that because the impact is greater than it is relative to the ROPS count on a 5090. So that is also misleading. Uh, and this is just, it is completely unacceptable, especially for a company to charge this much money for this type of GPU and to not try to really get out there and tell people about it, make sure they know about it. So Nvidia absolutely deserves to get raked over the coals for this. Uh, most users will not notice this and that's that's really the biggest problem with all of it. We did take apart the card. There is no physical difference to the die. The text looks the same. It's got the same branding. So it's not like this is some accidental <laughs> sub-brand uh, that was marked. And it looks the same when we checked a number of reviews online for other 5080 teardowns. So at least at a die level, we can't see a difference without maybe scanning an electron microscope or something.
The whole thing just sort of puts a cap on what has been an utter disaster of a launch for NVIDIA, where like we said in the last video, we'll link it below. Any one of these problems, okay, you get a mistake or two. But the totality of these mistakes is insane. And especially for the prices you're paying for it. It's absolutely baffling. So anyway, that's it for this one. Um, I, technically, we have a defective 5090 and 5070 Ti coming in as well. I guess we'll run them anyway. But you've seen the numbers for this one at the very least. And um, yeah, you, you absolutely should not settle for this. You're just as defective. Get a refund. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly. Your purchases there, like of our PC building mod mats, our project and soldering mats, our dice kits, our mule mugs, and more. All of that helps fund us as we pay the shipping fees or just buy out users from their cards sometimes uh, or buy cards to trade them with. And those store purchases directly help us. So thanks as always. You can go to patreon.com slash as well if you want to support there and subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.